Huh. Glad you can make it. I was told you wanted to become a pediatric heart surgeon and that you uh, want to know all the details. So, let's start off with the education you need. Huh. It's a long time ago. When I finished my two-year science program at Marianopolis, a very decent CGEP, I studied for three years at McGill in a Bachelor of Science, BSc, health-related program. In order to obtain the BSc degree, I had to take scientific disciplines, such as chemistry, biology, inorganic and organic chemistry, physiology, and anatomy. With a lot of hard work, I had a high enough GPA academic standing combined with an impressive background, and I was lucky enough to get accepted to medical school at McGill, where I studied for four years to get my medical doctorate MD degree. There, I had completed a foundational coursework in the practice of medicine, bodily systems, and diseases. There are many other great universities out there. The top three ranked medical schools in the world are at Harvard, Oxford, and Cambridge. The top three ranked universities in Canada are the University of Toronto, McGill University, and the University of British Columbia. And the best medical schools in Quebec are McGill University and Université de Montréal. Many medical schools require applicants to submit results for a medical college admission test, MCAT, which they use as an indicator for the admission process. However, McGill does not. After McGill school, I had a field experience. I was required to do five years of a general surgical residence program. After that, I had to do two years of a cardiothoracic residency. And finally, an additional two years in a fellowship specializing in children's surgery. When you get certified by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and licensed by the province of Quebec, you can finally be a pediatric cardiovascular surgeon. <laughs> Don't worry, it doesn't take too long. By the time I graduated CGEP, it only took me 18 years. <laughs> I was only 35 when I started. Now, you may ask yourself what I really do. A pediatric cardiovascular surgeon performs surgeries on newborns, children, teenagers, and even adults who have congenital which means from birth and acquired heart problems. Yes, I am a specialized surgeon who performs difficult surgery on smaller bodies. I can repair an injury to the heart, correct congenital acquired heart defects, and even conditions such as abnormal blood vessels, holes between chambers of the heart and valve problems. A pediatric heart surgeon can also perform lung, heart, and heart-lung transplants. I work in a hospital, but many surgeons work in clinics and in private practices. Here at the hospital, I work in offices and hospital and operating rooms, spending most of my days with children. Performing surgery demands for a surgeon to be standing up for long periods of time. The procedures are complex and involve a death risk of the patient. A surgeon must work long hours and may be called in when he is not working. Work on weekends is very common and the salary of a pediatric surgeon is approximately $762,000. It is important that the pediatric surgeon can communicate with children and gain the trust from his patients. I am required to work 8 hours a day in an operating room, however I usually work long hours, more than 12 hours a day. All day long I work with nurses, anesthesiologists, perfusionists, respiratory and physical therapists, social workers, and administrative personnel. Many may ask me why I would want to do this job, how it would feel if a young child passes when I perform surgery on him or her, and how I would live with myself. First of all, let me explain to you how I feel when I save a child's life. Children at a young age believe in superheroes such as Superman, who save the innocent and good people. It's truly indescribable to save the precious future of a child who will call you his Superman. Of course, what's least appealing of the job is that children may pass away while surgery is performed. However, as terrible this may sound, even if surgery wasn't performed, 
the child's future would be non-existent. As a surgeon, I try my best to make these children live their full potential. I want to be their superhero, and it's worth trying. There are three levels of surgeons. There are residents, staff surgeons, and department heads. To train in a field of specialization, as I explained before, one must be a resident. I did supervised work in hospitals by being a surgical assistant and I was on call for emergencies. The next promotion is a staff surgeon, which is a real cardiovascular surgeon who diagnoses and treats patients, which means doing the consultations and operations I explained before. The next level promotion, which I hope to become as a is a department head who diagnoses and treats patients and also does administrative work such as budgets. If you weren't aware, my job is controlled by the government because all health services are paid for by the provincial government in Quebec. Today, our province is in great demand for surgeons as they do not have enough. However, surgeons cannot seem to be hired in the field that needs them because the Quebec government cannot pay them. This is why it takes a while for me to be able to perform surgery on a patient. In other countries, such as the United States, there is a surplus of positions available because the government does not intervene as much as they do in our province. One last thing you should know is that surgeons around the world witness great changes in surgery. For instance, our procedures have been improved and more precise thanks to better equipment, instruments, sutures, and technology such as modern imaging technology and robot-assisted surgery.